Hi folks, welcome to the channel and thanks for joining me. So today we're going to take a quick look at a belt change on this Hitachi TRK8300E. Now I bought this unit as part of a consignment recently and the radio doesn't work, the clock doesn't work and also the um, tape mechanism doesn't work. But overall it's not in bad sort of physical or cosmetic condition. So I thought we'd take a bit of a look at it today. Um, just the belt change really first I think. If we... Um, I was going to put a tape in to show you, but you wouldn't see much because the sticker's on the door still. But if we just press play now, nothing's happening. You can hear it running. You can hear the motor. Um, fast forward. Again, you can hear the motor, but nothing's turning. And rewind. Same again. And also, you can see from the counter, I reset it, but nothing's happening. So... Either the, um, well, I imagine the main drive belt has gone and also the counter belt may well have gone as well. So let's just do that once for today, shall we? Let's uh, crack it open and take a look inside. Okay, so first thing we'll do is just get the screws out of the back. I don't know when this was actually ever last serviced. Probably, probably never. And always check inside the battery compartment as well. I don't think there are any screws in there. So next thing we need to do is get the back off. And to do that, we'll now get the tuner knob off. We'll also remove, remove the other knobs as well. Which came off remarkably easy. And I noticed that the springs are also missing from the... Uh, the knobs so this has been a part before so that's the six knobs removed and the uh, the tuner knob as well and so now we just need to separate the front and back casing Quite a tricky one to get open this, you've got four clips at the bottom that need to come away. So we'll lie it. Also I forgot to mention to remove the uh, mixer knob off the front. But anyways, so there we go, we lift up. And there are two, just two multi-plugs, which I'll show you in a second, that connect the speakers to the board. Which are just those two there. Okay, so that's them. And apart from that, the whole front part just comes away. Okay, now we're into the main the main unit, which is a bit dusty, as you can see. So we'll probably give that a bit of a dust and a bit of a vacuum shortly. Now, it doesn't look like the tape deck's ever been out of this one. Um, for the simple reason, the original tag cable tie is on there. Nothing's been disturbed down there. So these are various things that need to be disturbed to actually to remove the cassette deck and they've not been disturbed and therefore I don't think they've ever been taken out. Right, anyway, so what we'll do is we've got a number of screws to attach the cassette deck into place. But first thing we'll do is remove the actual um, dial gauge to give us access. So there's one just there, one here. The dial gauge then is stuck on, but I'm hoping that that will have perished away a fair bit by now. So it shouldn't put up too much of a fight. And also it's retained, it's retained on that clip there. I'm taking it out of the clip. I don't think you have to, but I'm just gonna do belts and braces so that I know it's only the tape holding it on. And just be careful not to not to damage the actual string either. 
and I can see the tape holding it on. There. And there's the dial gauge away, so we can give that a wipe in due course, put it safe. So next stage is to remove the cassette deck itself. So with the cover off, I believe there are only four screws actually retaining the cassette deck mechanism itself. And before I get this out, yuck, yuck, okie dokie. Yep, I can see the belt, it's completely, it's one of those that's turned to absolute goo around all of the pulleys. So this is gonna be fun. It's gonna take longer to clean the belt, old belt off than it is to get the actual mechanism out. But anyway, screws then. So there's one here in this corner. And just be slightly mindful because you've got the tuner string here, so you don't want to upset all of that mechanism. We will also get the um, retaining screw out as well. All this one does is re uh, retain the cables there. So we'll also get some side cutters and just remove these carefully. Righty ho. And there is the de tape deck mechanism. Easy as that. So literally what, four or five screws once we've got the tuner string out of the way. And unfortunately, well, the good news is these are easy to work on. The bad news is um, this one has shed its belt all over the place. And yeah, there's a bit on that pulley. There's some that you may just see around there. There's also going to be lots. Look around the flywheel. Marvellous. This is going to be fun. But essentially, the next job we will do, just going to put some packaging underneath. Just to protect it a little bit. You can actually withdraw the whole mechanism if you want to. And you can free up, you can free up more cables in various places. There are some multi-plugs to enable you to do that, but we don't really need to do that today. So we will just remove the flywheel cover or bearing cover with two screws. And then we just remove the mechanism screw here. Obviously to change the belt, um, we wouldn't need to do any, any more than this. You literally would just slip the new belt on and that effectively is the job done. Um, it runs incidentally um, around the pulley and over the motor pulley and off of this idler here. So that's the path it will take. But the reason I'm taking this off now is because the old one is all gooey inside the flywheel and it's going to be much easier and quicker to remove the residue with the flywheel out. And as it's such an easy job to remove the lever that's in the way, we'll do that now. Just be mindful, of course, of the washer on the other side of the flywheel. Okay, the flywheel is out. And there is that tiny, don't know if it will focus, the tiniest little washer just there. So we'll put that safe for sure. So all we've got to do now, unfortunately, you can see I've barely touched anything and I've already got this almost indelible black stain. That's actually the residue of, um, of the belt. 
and that's going to get everywhere in a minute. So we're literally just going to be scraping this out gently with a, with a plastic tool, some isopropyl alcohol to dissolve it all out and just make sure that you've cleaned all of the surfaces um, ready before the new belt goes on. So I'll stop it there for a moment and then I'll come back when everything's clean. So we've got most of the dust out for a minute. I have noticed whilst I was uh, in here though that one of the springs has been detached. So someone's been in here before by the looks of things. Might as well um, put a little bit of rubber renew on it. I'll leave the gloves on for this because it's quite nasty stuff. I could have done this while the idler mechanism was actually off, but um, it's just as easy to do it here now. We don't know how well it, how much it was slipping anyway before because of course the tape didn't work. And as it's driven off the belt, we had no idea whether the idler tire was any good or not. It looks to be in good condition. It, it, there's some meat on it still. It's not dry. It doesn't look cracked or perished. But in any event, in any event, I think giving it a bit of a freshen up won't do it any harm. Okay, so we're just about to start putting things back together, but I'm just going to firstly put a little drop of a very light oil onto the capstan. Sorry, not onto the capstan, not yet, onto the motor shaft. Because this tape hasn't been run in a while. So just a tiny bit there that will work in. Making sure you don't get any on the pulley, of course, because you don't want the belt to slip. And also, just this tiniest little bit there on the bearing. And just on the capstan. We'll clean it off on the other side shortly. But just wanted to get that back through. Okay, well that's spinning beautifully and silently. Okay, now everything's put back together, so we'll get a new belt on. And we'll start just by pulling that over the motor pulley. And it's a square belt on this one. So try not to get it too twisted. And we'll just spin it a few times until it settles. I'm happy with that now. So just put a tiny little dab of grease onto the bearing surface. And we'll pop him back in place now. Okay, good. So we've had a bit of a clean up. I've just checked the, um, the counter belt. And I don't know if you can see that going round, but it's working absolutely fine. So there's no need to replace that one. It's in good condition. We've replaced the main belt and that's now, that's now working fine. Um, we've greased it up. We've put some rubber renew on the idler tire. We've oiled the bearing surfaces. So yeah, we've oiled the, uh, the motor as well. So we'll turn it over now, I think, and clean the heads and see what we've got to do on that side. The very last job though is just to put a little bit of contact cleaner on the place switch there just to make sure that that's all fresh. And so to clean the heads we'll just move across with some IPA. Get rid of any residues of ferrite, any deposits of old songs that have been played on here. Pretty clean to be honest. But we'll just do the capstan while we're here. We know the capstan's clean because we did actually give it a wipe anyway just now. But we'll also do the pinch roller while we can get to it. And we'll just turn that and clean it as we go. It's not too bad. You can see, you can probably see some of the grime that's coming off it. But uh, I've seen a lot worse. And it feels actually quite sort of sticky to the touch, as it were. 
um, it's not glazed over or perished. So that's good stuff. And I think just whilst we're in here as well, we might as well go ahead and actually clean some of the switches. Because we haven't tried these out as such because it wasn't it wasn't running right anyway. But given that the belt's been perished for so long, we also know we also know that these switches won't have been used in a long time. Before you write in and say I'm using too much cleaner, I'm actually right at the bottom of the can, so there's barely any coming out. We can also get to some of the pots as well. So I'll go ahead in a minute and do the back of the potentiometers, go inside the switches and all that kind of stuff. So I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so we've greased the, uh, the flywheel. We've clean the capstan and the pinch roller, clean the running surfaces, put a new belt on, clean the play switch, uh, put some rubber renew on the idler tire, check the condition and functionality of the counter belt, a couple of other bits and pieces really, um, clean the heads. Yep, so um, I think we're good to go. So what we've got to do now is very carefully line it back up again onto the four screws and just check the uh, the cable runs, cable management, just clip all that back in and um, yeah, we'll be good to go. So the cassette mech is now back in, the light panel is on and the dial gauge is fixed securely. And we've just put some fresh cable ties back in just for the cable management. So hopefully it'll look like we've never been in here. Now that everything's bolted back together, I can actually get to the uh, open side of the potentiometers now. So perfect opportunity just to work some contact cleaner into those. I'm just going to chance my arm a bit now. Just put some contact cleaner on the battery terminals for the small batteries, which actually power the clock. And the clock obviously was untested. Fortunately, Fortunately, nobody left batteries in here. But the terminals don't look too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of batteries in there and see whether or not we can actually get the clock to work. You won't be able to see much at the moment. These are buried. They actually live below the main batteries. There's one in. So if these batteries work, yeah, we've got nothing, ah, oh, hang on. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but the clock, well, it did kind of just work very briefly. So I was gonna have a look at the clock today as a side issue. Um, I've got a few of these that need repairing. You can see that it's working properly. It's actually keeping time okay. And ultimately I'm hopeful I'll be able to get it get it fixed and sorted out. But for the moment, um, we're just gonna put it back together as she is like so, and we'll come back to this another day. This is one of the nicest parts about working on these old stereos. These knobs, pots and switches and stuff wouldn't have probably been off of here in decades. So uh, great chance to give them a proper clean and will look absolutely fantastic, no doubt. This might seem laborious, but it's the attention to detail that uh, makes it look great in the end. Oh, and you can already see I've just polished the aerial as well. And so here it is, the Itachi 8300E, and it looks like it's pretty much all sorted, really. A couple of little things still left to do, but um, I took this on as a project. It wasn't working at all, really. And um, the tape didn't work. The radio didn't really work. Um, it's all just a bit of a mess, really. So apart from the, uh, the obvious physical stuff of giving it a really nice clean and a polish by taking it apart and doing that, polishing the aerial, 
tightening it up as well because it was a bit floppy and loose, all those little jobs. But basically I, I opened this up really because I was intending on just getting the tape running and replacing the belt. So um, just got in there really, checked the, uh, the belt, of course it had totally perished. So cleaned all that up, took the opportunity to just clean the kind of um, the pulley bearing surfaces, oil the, uh, the flywheel, oil the capstan motor, clean the heads, um, clean the pinch roller, all that kind of stuff really. I also put some rubber renew on the idler tire. Um, lots of little jobs really, but cleaned the switches whilst I was in there as best I could for now anyway. Um, I wasn't going to originally, but um, anyways, of course, once you're in there, it's hard to just um, to stop really. So it's nice just to clean all the switches and stuff whilst you're there. But the long, the long and the short of it is the tape is now running and we've also got the radio running as well. The only thing we didn't quite fix at the moment is the clock. Now it's off at the moment anyway, because it does take two AA batteries, which are inside deep within the, uh, the unit. And um, I've taken those back out for now because it's only partially reading, but we'll come back and look at that another time. But yeah, so the radio's working now. It's on all bands. So um, we'll just try that now. I think it's on, uh, it's on long wave. Um, so you take your desiccated coconut. Um, and also it works throughout all the other bands as well, but I'll just put it onto FM stereo just to have a listen to that. And um, hopefully we'll get a signal. There we go. And you can see Almost the FM stereo you know, working, we go big so that's all good. Ways, yep, right? sweet. For me, one of them is Hartsfield Good Fun. I get to pick out. I'll just turn it down a moment. So yeah, so um, all the other controls, knobs and switches work wonderfully. There's no uh, sort of crackle or anything like that now that we've cleaned the pots. So let's just try the tape. So we'll just switch it over to, um, we'll just put it over to tape mode. So I've just loaded the cassette in and swapped hands a minute. <laughs> And you can see that's working just fine. And the, the tape counter's going round, so we just stop and fast forward. Sorry, rewind. Stop, fast forward. Yep, and play again. And pause. Superb. It's also got Dolby as well. And um, the light is a green light, I think, on the side there. Yep. Um, and that appeared to be working okay. Um, didn't need it on that particular tape I was just playing. But there we go. So um, nothing else much to say on this at the moment, apart from the fact that, um, yeah, really, really pleased with it. Really pleased how it's come along. And so, yeah, it's, uh, it's another one just to add some fun to have worked on. I will go back in and do a couple of things like the clock at some point. Um, and if I'm honest, I think the uh, the function switch needs either a slight better clean or perhaps needs taken apart because it can be a tiny little bit intermittent. Um, but other than that, yeah, smashing machine. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching the video. And um, please do subscribe and hit the notifications bell. We've got a load more updates coming up on different uh, radio cassettes, eight track players, personal stereos, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, there it is. Then anyway, that's another one to wear uh, that's cleaned up. It does actually come with its own box as well and instructions and the original aerial. Um, so yes, yeah, so that'd be quite nice to keep this as a um, as a semi-complete unit all cleaned up. And um, yeah, it's been it's been a nice one to work on. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Goodbye for now.